a huge, really important friend of One Young World, and this is a person who honestly lives his life going around the world ensuring that all of us keep on our toes and that we keep collaborating. So he called me at the end of last year and he said, do you realize, same time you're doing One Young World in Ottawa, there's the Enactus World Cup happening in Toronto. So I said, yes, we knew, and I realized it was a pain, but I, I wrote to him and I said, Michael, you know, we really should get one of the top Enactus teams to then come to Ottawa with you, an email back immediately from this incredibly busy man saying, absolutely, I'm on it, I'm sorting it out. And he's going to be introducing them, but what he's got with him is not just one of the Enactus teams, but he's going, to introduce, he's going to introduce them himself, but we have the honor to welcome him to the One Young World stage, the Global Head of Citizenship at KPMG. Please welcome Lord Michael Hastings of Scarisbrick. <laughs> Ten seconds whilst he's here on his own. He's been the most tireless supporter of ours over the years. There's a kind of very close, tight-knit family without whose support we wouldn't be here today, and he's one of them. Very good. Thank, thank you, thank you. So uh, this is Passion Week for me. It's been energy hype beginning here on Wednesday with you at the opening ceremony. It was wonderful. And then I flipped off down to Toronto and spent Thursday and Friday with an actress. And what you're going to see in a couple of minutes is not just a team from Enactus, but the winning team. We managed to get the winning team to come here to Ottawa. They're going to come on in a few minutes, and they're going to show you what the Enactus organization is all about. Here's the context. There is a wonderful, wonderful old African proverb that many of you will know. It goes like this. If you want to go somewhere fast, you go alone. If you want to go far, you go together. And I've been really burdened over the years by what was the Millennium Development Goals, 2000 to 2015, a set of targets you all know to cut extreme poverty in half, to make sure every primary age child got education to begin to provide maternal care for women who wanted to bear children in safety, to make sure that <clears throat> the right medicines got to the right needs in the right place. And most of those goals were fulfilled. And then along came the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. Exactly a year ago, September 2015, the target is by 2030, now, I know most of you are very bright. Some, anyway, most of you are very bright. You get it. If you extract 2015 from 2030 and you look at 2016, how many years have we got left to meet the target to end extreme poverty and hunger? To make sure every child gets quality education right the way through to secondary level. To make sure no child dies literally in their mother's womb or just at birth, to provide that. I don't know how many of you have gone to the toilet today. Hands up. Anybody been to the toilet? Anybody been? Anybody been? Anybody not been that's having trouble? Oh, you are. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> We're going to get you some Imodium, a bit of relief. But uh, <laughs> let me tell you something. You've all been to the toilet multiple times today. Guess what? 1.4 billion people, it's more than the population of India, more than the population of China, don't have a toilet. They don't have a toilet. More children in our world die of diarrhea every day, dirty water. Look at this lovely water we've got everywhere. They don't have it. More children die of diarrhea than AIDS, malaria, and TB put together. Last night, and you didn't see this on the news, 
Last night, 22,500 children under the age of six died. But nobody reported it. Do you know why? Because they're going to die again tonight and tomorrow night and the days before and the weeks after. We just get used to the rolling tragedy of continuing poverty and hunger and disease and lack of facilities. One of the things that happened at Enactus was a really great conversation about the race to end waste. Here's the figure that was given. And I know this has been tested in New York and it's been tested in London. But roughly around 35% of all the food available in the developed world, so here in Canada, in the United States, all, <coughs> all over Europe, across Australia, New Zealand, in the developed world, 35% of that food is wasted. You know, I saw it because when you have to come backstage to go back there, I just witnessed everything you didn't eat at lunch. I'm not saying you should have eaten it all, but what I did see literally back there was all the stuff you didn't eat. And when you think about it, all the water we just chuck away, all the food we don't consume, and somebody else isn't getting anything. So we need collaboration and partnership if we're going to achieve this big objective to bring dignity to those who are starving, to give honor to those who previously have left felt disregarded, to help the illiterate learn how to read and engage in the digital world, if we're going to do that, we're going to have to work together. One Young World is a stunningly wonderful organization. I love Kate and David to bits and everything that we have achieved together over the years. KPMG, who I represent, we brought the largest delegation ever here. We have 58 people here, and there's another 11 people from Vodafone. I'm responsible for 70 people here. I'm really proud of the fact of our commitment to One Young World. But I'm also proud of the fact that I spent yesterday and the day before with 3,500 students and with 600 corporate executives. And we spent those days listening to students from across the world. In other words, when you were at university, listening to the kind of dynamic projects that they've come up with to tackle these sustainable development goals. Let me just give you a little scale about Enactus. It's a really important partnership for us, for KPMG, and lots of other corporations. But it's working in 36 countries. In 36 countries, there are 1,700 universities who have Enactus programs. That means 70,000 students are directly engaged every single day. They come as far away as from Zimbabwe, as from Korea, and Japan, and China, and of course the United States, and of course from Latin America, from Brazil, and from across the continent of Africa, and from all over Europe. And they come together once a year in a big World Cup event, Last year, it was in South Africa. The year before, it was in Beijing. This year, it was down the road in Toronto. It's really important that if we're going to achieve the top objectives the world has set for us that we believe in, we have to learn to work together. You'll have known that very recently, the Pope made Mother Teresa into a saint. I've always believed she was a saint all the time. But now she's got the formal title, but she isn't there anymore. Never mind. Others recognize and value that. She had a wonderful, wonderful quote that I found a great driver in my life. And it's this. She said, not many of us are ever going to be able to be the great leaders who change the world forever. But all of us can choose to do small things with great love. And in the multiplicity of all those acts, the world is changed forever. So I'm going to bring on my friends from Enactus, Memorial University, Newfoundland, the winning team. They got through every other team. Come on out. 
and actress guys and girls. Bring them on. And it's over to them. Hi, everyone. My name is Angelie States. My name is Aaron Brown. I'm Emily Bland. My name is Taylor Young. Hello, everyone. My name is Deidre Wheeler. My name is Mark Spurl. My name is Krista Burton. And I'm Patrick Beja. Welcome to Canada, a country where our stories are as diverse as our people. Often, these stories are full of optimism, pride, and resilience. We're kind, we take hockey a little too seriously, and we apologize way too much. Despite this, at times all of our stories have challenges, from food insecurity, unemployment, to financial strain. But it's how you overcome these challenges that defines your story. And at Enactus Memorial, our story is of resilience and using sustainable social enterprise to truly change the world. This year, we tackled an issue that Canadians have faced for generations. You see, there's a part of this country that you don't often hear about. A part that we as Canadians have been conditioned our entire lives to forget. A part that's not accessible by roads, where unemployment reaches as high as 50%, and we're finding fresh food is next to impossible. It's easy to forget that you're still in Canada, but yet this is the reality for thousands of Canadians, where they have to wait weeks for food to get shipped in. And when it does come in, it's a moldy pepper for $9. These stories have been going on for far too long, and with such big challenges happening in our own home, we knew we had to focus in Canada and find a scalable solution. So how do we do it? How does a team of students find a way to get fresh food to people in one of the world's harshest climates? It's a complicated question. But that doesn't mean that the answer has to be. Our answer is Project Succeed. Here's the idea. Design a product that can grow fresh food anywhere. Then create employment for those who need it by hiring them to build that product. We sell it to schools, the general public, anyone that it can help. And those sales finance our core objective feeding the North. This year, Project Succeed was our big idea, and we've spent the past 365 days making it happen. We started by working with expert botanists and engineers to design an innovative system that uses the hydroponic method of growing produce. Our system cultivates plants indoors using a nutrient-rich solution and artificial UV light without the use of soil. The solution is cycled through the system from a body of water where plants are stored. When the solution reaches the pods, it's absorbed by a growth medium that comes in direct contact with the plant roots, giving them the optimal blend of nutrients. Compared to traditional agriculture, our systems use 90% less water, provide a 75% higher yield, and can grow produce twice as fast. Virtually any fruit or vegetable can be grown, like strawberries, peppers, or even broccoli. But to better go through the growing process, we'll use lettuce as an example. One system can produce 12 heads of lettuce in just five weeks. Once the lettuce is ready for harvest, the leaves can be broken off and then they regenerate, providing 12 new heads of lettuce every two weeks. A system can grow up to 1,000 pounds of produce each year. In southern Canada, that's worth about $1,800. In the north, 4,000. And it's not too difficult to grow this much food. With a system that doesn't require a lot of experience, isn't dictated by climate, or limited by soil quality, and costs just 30 cents per day to operate, communities across the north no longer have to go without fresh produce. With our design tested and finalized, we are ready to begin production. We designed a lean manufacturing process where our systems can be built for just $166. Recognizing that the skills gained from building our systems could be transferred to other careers, we saw an opportunity to create meaningful employment for at-risk youth in our province. Job opportunities for those suffering from illness, addictions, or homelessness are very limited. And we knew Project Succeed could help. So we partnered with Choices for Youth, a not-for-profit organization that provides at-risk and homeless youth with a range of supports. When they come to work at Project Succeed, they get to do so many cool things. They learn the mechanics of hydroponic systems, 
the science behind them, and gain the skills that they need to get back on their feet. Today, they're equipped with top-of-the-line DeWalt tools, an ergonomic workshop, and have a full-time project coordinator. We are providing them with a foundation to start their careers and work through their personal challenges. These young people couldn't find a job because they had no experience. But they couldn't get experience because no one would give them a chance. We don't expect them to build hydroponic systems for the rest of their lives, but this project breaks that cycle. It's allowing them to connect with society and see something that they made with their own two hands make meaningful difference. With our production up and ready, we were ready to start tackling the issue of food security across the North. Northern Canadians need consistent access to fresh and affordable food. The best way to make this happen? Cooperatives. So we began launching them across the North. First, we find members of the community who want to get involved. They purchase the system and everything needed to grow. Then we help them set it up and get started and provide ongoing support to ensure that they're successful. We offer our systems at a subsidized rate. And to ensure that finances would never be a barrier to getting involved, we worked with Capital One to design a microloan program so members can get started without any financial strain. These cooperatives can be set up in one of two ways. In the first option, we help them establish a contract to wholesale their produce to the local store. Since shipping costs are eliminated, the store can sell it back to the community at a significantly reduced price. In the second option, they grow a variety of produce and share it among other cooperative members, ensuring they always have access to fresh produce without a high price tag. Our first cooperative began in Rigolette, Labrador, <clears throat> working under the first option. Wholesaling produce to the local store, where it sold back to the community at a 57% savings. In Rigolette, we met Ines. For years, she's dreamed of becoming an entrepreneur, but lacked the tools and resources to make it happen. To ensure her business would be a success, we worked with her one-on-one -on -one and taught her the hydroponic method. We then helped her evaluate market demand to determine what her community needed and when, and helped her assess the most profitable way to operate. Now, Ines and four other community members are working in a cooperative ensuring their community no longer has to go without the fresh food that they need. In RV at Nunavut, we worked with community members to develop a food sharing cooperative. In this community, sharing is an important part of their culture, so they knew this model would be the perfect fit. Meet Keenan. He wanted to bring his community together to start a cooperative and grow fresh produce. So we helped him and 11 others set up hydroponic systems in each of their homes. Under this model, members grow a variety of produce, work together to manage supply and demand, and share amongst themselves. And each member can save up to $345 per month. Ines and Keenan are now feeding themselves and their families. And they're not alone. They're just two of 63 individuals in 12 cooperatives. In Rigolette, Arviat, Postville, and nine other locations, we are showing people that they're not limited to the options in front of them. They can make their own options and make real change. The impact we saw in the North was immediate and we had to make sure that we could continue to start more cooperatives in more communities for many years to come. So we found a way to sustainably fund this by selling our systems to the general public. Right from the start, we saw incredible media attention and had people from across the country coming to us asking the same thing, where can I get one? We developed a price point that was affordable to the public, still competitive on the market, and gives Project Succeed the funding to continue reaching northern communities. Our price is $350. And with the cost savings that come from growing your own produce, our systems pay for themselves in just four months. The cost of producing a system is $166, with the profit of $184 being reinvested into the enterprise. With this, we're making Project Succeed a self-sufficient social enterprise. Our focus is feeding northern communities, but we're also helping other demographics. We sell them our systems, give them the help they need, and use the profit to fund our work in the North. Our systems are being sold in our retail model to individuals coast to coast. They're helping soup kitchens decrease costs and providing a sustainable way to feed those in need. We partnered with Correctional Services Canada to create an employment transition program for six former inmates and are now developing a program that can operate nationwide. We even launched our systems in retirement homes providing horticultural therapy and fresh produce at five locations, improving the lives of over 600 seniors. To educate our country's youth on the importance of agriculture and eating healthy, we launched Project Succeed in 13 classrooms through a three-month hands-on curriculum. And just one short month ago, we received a phone call that changed everything. 
Realizing the importance of this hands-on learning, Tim Hortons, one of Canada's largest food service operators, approached us to put our systems in every elementary school across Canada. <laughs> Together, we are already expanding to an additional 60 schools, educating over 4,900 of our province's future leaders. And upon success, we're going nationwide. Not only is this the opportunity to improve the education of over 1.6 million Canadian students, but the sales will allow us to implement an additional 2,300 systems across the north. The Prime Minister of Canada, Justin Trudeau, recognized our impact as he saw how this incredible work has helped northern Canadians gain cheaper access to healthy and fresh food. Twelve months ago, none of this existed. Project Succeed was just an idea. And today, it's a real business. This has been one incredible year, and next year will be even better. We're on track to have 2,000 hydroponic systems in operation. To meet this demand, we will scale our workshop to employ 20 youth. This will fund 60 more northern cooperatives, empowering over 300 community members across the north. Project Succeed will generate over $630,000 in revenue and grow up to 2.1 million pounds of produce each year. We took on a big challenge this year with Project Succeed and we are so proud of where it is today. But our impact goes far beyond just one project. We run a portfolio of 12 other projects, and now we will quickly highlight three others. Since 2012, we continued running Project Bottlepreneur, working with individuals who push carts and collect recyclables to move past dumpster diving, and to instead provide a sustainable door-to-door -door recycling service to their community. Now, our bottlepreneurs are operating completely independently, collecting over 1.8 million recyclables, generating over $90,000 this year. Project Bottlepreneur is more than just a recycling service. It's an opportunity to empower those once impoverished to become not only entrepreneurs, but environmental leaders. Since 2013, we've been dedicated to Project Stitch, helping physically disabled Haitians gain sustainable employment by becoming professional sewers and selling their products around the world. Today, it's operating in a state-of-the-art 4,000-square-foot facility. This year, the project employed 28 Haitians at five times the average daily wage, and now it's operating on its own for Haitians by Haitians. Since creating Prince's Operation Entrepreneur in 2008, every year we continue to teach transitioning Canadian Forces members how to apply the skills they've learned in the military to becoming entrepreneurs. Eight years later, the project has grown exponentially and this year has been our best to date, generating over $2.3 million in revenue. And now, we even have a program running in Australia, benefiting over 500 of our country's heroes this year. This year, we ran 13 projects that offset over 500 tons of CO2, changed over 3,000 lives, started 91 businesses, created 248 jobs, and generated over $2.6 million in revenue. No matter where we are from, we all face challenges, but they don't define us. Enactus inspires all of us to overcome these challenges and write our own stories. This year, our 71 volunteers have dedicated over 17,000 hours to empowering people to write their own stories. And these stories are just getting started. This is an Actus Memorial where we're tackling global issues and proving that changing a world begins with making real change right here at home. So stay there for a minute. This is just the encouragement they needed after all the energy of yesterday, a long night, and then to travel up here. What a wonderful team, aren't they amazing? They deliver such great results. Michael, Michael you think of the football, the, the football World Cup, and you think about a World Cup winner, and I'm looking at you guys, and I'm going, 
That's what a World Cup winner looks like. Yes, indeed. <laughs> so literally, we just have a minute left. And I just want to give you a sense of what we can be about together. Because we've said at One Young World, and we've said at Enactus, that we're committed to meeting the Sustainable Development Goals. We want to get there by 2030. We don't want to have communities remaining desperate, poor, disadvantaged, broken, not enjoying the freedoms and privileges and ease of life that we all enjoy just at the click of a finger. All those facilities we use and we never think about it. And so many never have the chance to flick a switch or even drink or a mother not sure that she could bear a child in safety. What can you do? Find your nearest universities. If they have an Enactus program, please get involved as a mentor. If they don't, get on the website. You can see what Enactus is about and encourage it so that when you go back, there's a collaborative opportunity that can work between One Young World and Enactus. I think it's worth doing because it will keep this power of youth energy going beyond just the students and beyond the mid-20s right the way through into the 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s, which is where I am. So don't give up. Keep going. Let's thank them.